Hello. So we are going to work on finding the area under a curve and we're going to work on doing this with the limit definition. So the problem says by the limit definition find the area of the region bounded by the graph of y equals 3x squared plus 1 and the x-axis over the interval 1 to 3. All right well let's try and get a picture of what this looks like. It's a parabola getting skinnier by a factor of 3 and shifted up 1. So it looks like, well, let me try and get that a little better. Here we go. It probably shifted up 1, going from x equals 1 to 3, and it's that region right there. And that's what we need. Well, by our formula, we know that area is equal to the limit, as n approaches infinity, of the summation from i equals 1 to infinity, or well, actually n, um, and then we're going to let n go to infinity, of f of c sub i times change of x. And now the question becomes, well, what is c sub i? And what is change of x? And that's what we're going to look at by, off to the side, we'll figure that out. And right, this formula makes sense because this is going to be the height of one rectangle and this is going to be the um, base of one rectangle, or the width of one rectangle, your change of x. Now what's cool about this is we can do this with a right endpoint approximation or a left endpoint approximation. Because as we let n go into infinity, or as we let those rectangles go to infinity, um, it's going to get the same answer, whether with the right or the left. And you will see the right endpoint is often a whole lot easier to work with, so we're probably going to do that. Now change of x, that's b minus a divided by n. So the right endpoint minus the left endpoint. So 3 minus 1 divided by n, 2 over n. Okay, that's our change of x. C sub i, which is like the, the x value of each of your rectangles. That is a, or your left endpoint, plus change of x times i. Well, that is if we're doing a right endpoint. And you should also know at this point, if I'm doing a left endpoint, it would be 1 plus change of x times i minus 1, which that, if you simplify, would have to be 1 plus 2i over n minus 2 over n. And you see immediately that the left endpoint, so this is left endpoint, is a whole lot harder than the right endpoint. Because see, I'm going to have to take that c sub i and plug it into my function. And if I'm dealing with three terms versus two terms, well, two terms is easier. So when you're doing this by the limit definition, I would stick with the right endpoint almost every time. It's just a lot easier. So now my specific formula is going to look like the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation, and I'll probably drop some of this notation in a second to make it go quicker. f of c sub i, so f of, we're using the right end point, 1 plus 2i over n times change of x, which is 2 over n. Okay, well, f of 1 plus 2i over n, what is that? Well, let's plug it into my function. So this is going to equal the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation, i equals 1 to n, of 3 times, okay, so this is going in for every x, 1 plus 2i over n squared plus 1, and that's my function, that's f of c sub i times change of x, we get here. Now, that is our area. This is the area under the curve. Well, at least the formula for it. Now we got to work through and actually evaluate it, get a number for it. So here we go. This is where I'll drop some, a little bit of notation just to speed things up. Remember, we're going to have to take the limit in the end. Um, in my summation, it's from 1 to n, but I'll just leave the summation. I have to simplify things. I'm going to work on simplifying uh, this portion of it right now. So I have 1 plus 
i divided by n. So that's 1 plus 2i divided by n times 1 plus 2i divided by n. Remember, if you're squaring something, you got that formula. It is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So as calculus students, we should be able to quickly do this, and we get um, a squared plus now 2 times a times b plus b squared, which is 4i squared over n squared. A little formula as calculus students, we should be able to breeze through. Plus 1, and then all of this times 2 over n. Okay, so this is summation of, I'm now going to multiply everything by 3. Uh, 3 plus 12i over n plus 12i squared. I really do enjoy these problems because at this point, you can kind of just flow with the algebra. Um, and it can kind of enjoyable. Like there's just a lot of numbers floating everywhere which of course a lot of room for error, but also uh, just a lot of simple steps that can be enjoyable as someone who enjoys math. So let's combine this, the three plus one. So I have four plus 12 i over n. Now remember my summation is only affecting the i's, which means anything with an n can be factored out. So I can pull it out of the summation. Well, so I can pull out a two divided by n, but I'm going to make this a little bit better. I'm going to make all three of these fractions into one single fraction. So I'm going to get a common denominator, which is n squared. So this first thing has to be 4n squared. The next one I have to multiply by just n. And then the third one doesn't have to be multiplied by anything. And that gives me a common denominator of n squared. And all of that's times 2 over n. Well, what can I factor out? I've got an n squared right here and an n. So I can factor out an n cubed. Well, notice I can also factor out a constant of 2. And let's do this all in one step. In between all of these, there's a common factor of 4. So in fact, I can factor out a 4 times 2. I can factor out an 8. The 4 from the big fraction and the 2 from the change of x on the outside. And then an n cubed. Okay, I can factor out that, leaving me with the summation of n squared plus 3in plus 3i squared. Our goal is to get use our summation formulas uh, to get rid of all those i's, which means I have to split this up into a bunch of individual summations. So the 8n cubed is going to be multiplying everything but I split it into three separate sums of the summation of n squared plus the summation of 3in plus the summation of 3i squared. Now out of these individual summations, I'm going to factor even further, trying to leave um, just the i's or a constant so I can use my formulas. So 8n cubed still sticking out front. Out of the first one, I can factor an n squared, leaving me the summation of 1. Next one, I'll factor out a 3n, leaving me a summation of i. And out of the next one, just a 3, summation of i squared. I have a formula for what the sum of 1 is, what the sum of i is, what the sum of i squared is. If you don't remember that, uh, consult your textbook or wherever you're looking at for the formulas. I do know them here. Uh, so I have 8 divided by n cubed times n squared, the summation of 1 going from i equals 1 to n is just n. It's like adding up 1 n times. Plus 3 times n and the summation of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And then plus 3 times summation of i squared, well this is a hard one to remember, but it is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. Now remember, we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of this. So I've got it all in n, which is great. But uh, it would be hard to take this because, well, I end up with infinity on the bottom because of this and infinity on the top because of all these n's. So I'm not ready to really take the limit yet. I want to try and get this all into kind of one fraction and then split it up. So we got a lot of simplifying work in front of us. 8 divided by n squared. I have n cubed here. 
plus um, 3n squared times n plus 1 over 2. And then over here, this can reduce to a 1 and a 2, leaving me with n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 2. Now, even before I go forward and simplify those things in the bracket, notice what I have out front, an n cubed in the denominator. That means I'm going to kind of distribute that in and reduce a little bit. Okay, so as I distribute this to this term, what do I get? Just 8. The n cubes cancel out. And now when we distribute the 8 over n cubed to this term, what do we get? We get the 2 reduces to a 1 and the 8 to a 4. The n cubed reduces to an n and that goes away. So that means we have 8 plus 12 times n plus 1 divided by n. When we go to our third one, and I'll just use red for these new cancellations, the 2 goes to 1, the 8 goes to 4, the n cubed goes to n squared and reduces with that n. What does that leave me? That leaves me with 4 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by n squared. Okay, so these I need to work on simplifying. So up here I can distribute 12n plus 12 over n. On the next one, I'm going to have 4 times 2n squared, so we're going to FOIL this, 2n squared plus n plus 2n, 2n, and then plus 1 times 1, which is 1, all divided by n squared. See, this is just fun, easy algebra. It's fun to go through and do this. So I have 12n plus 12 divided by n over here. I distribute the 4, but first let's recognize that this is 3n. Save us a step here. So I have 8n squared plus 12n plus 4 divided by n squared. And we're almost there. In fact, let me write out front here. Remember, do not forget, we are taking the limit as n goes to infinity. The goal when you are doing this is if I have an n in the denominator and it goes to infinity, it causes the whole fraction to go to zero. If I have 1 divided by n and n goes to infinity, the whole thing goes to zero. If I have n divided by 4 and n goes to infinity, then it goes to infinity. Our goal is to kind of break this up into individual fractions like this so that I can take that limit um, and actually get an answer for it. So this equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 8 plus 12n divided by n plus 12 over n. See that n, it divides both of my fractions. Well, guess what? This n squared divides all three of these numbers. So I can rewrite that as plus 8n squared over n squared plus 12n over n squared and 4 divided by n squared. So the limit of all that. I can reduce some of those n's. We're almost there, folks. Almost there. 8 plus 12, as these n's reduce, those n squareds reduce. This reduces with one of those. Okay, so plus 12 over n plus 8 plus 12 over n plus 4 divided by n squared. Let's combine some like terms. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity of 8 plus 12 plus 8, so 28, plus 24 over n, plus 4 over n squared. The moment you have been waiting for, we are ready to take the limit. So as n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, this goes to 0. And guess what? This equals 28. Wow, here we go. And 28, we're trying to find area here, so let's just say 28 units squared. That's the area. Oh, let's zoom out and see how much work did we do today. Oh, that's not that's not too bad. That's only that. That's not too much work. So um, that is looking at the problem. The area under the curve y equals three x squared plus one from one to three. So how much area is covered by that? 
28 units squared. That's how much area is covered by it. And that's by the limit definition.